You're welcome to this press briefing this morning. And it's captioned, uh, Minister Nkiru Konya Jocha, a conduit deployed by APC to destabilize our party, the Labour Party. We are here to intimate you on yet an unholy alliance between the Honorable Minister of State for Labour, Nkiru Konya Jocha, and some expelled members of our party, as you all know, led by Chief Lamidia Papa, and whose purpose is to ensure that crisis is sustained perpetually in our party. One may begin to wonder what concerns the Minister of State for Labour, Honorable Nkiru Konya Jocha, and the Labour Party, that she will go at length to instigate and fund crisis within the party. We are, however, aware that the former lawmaker is fighting a personal and prosy war against the party. Onye Jocha has been in the National Assembly for the past 16 years, since 27, 2007 until February 25th general, general election, when he was defeated by Honorable Amo Bioga with a very wide margin. Her loss to Amo Bioga was a pill too hard to swallow. Hence, she has vowed to use all her connections to ensure that the election declared by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, is upturned in her favor. Her political ambition was to be the Speaker of the Federal House of Representatives, though that cannot be achieved. She has also boasted that powers that be in Asoro has promised her the Speakership, a position she contested in 2019 but lost to Feri Bajabi Amila who now is the Chief of Staff in the Tinubu administration. Onye Dota believes that the Isukwa Tomu no Chifera constituency is her chief done. However, the result of the election altered all those plans. Permutations for Onye Dota, who saw her ambition drifting. For her to be the speaker, she must first win the seat at the refs and Amobi Oga was the only stumbling block. Therefore, he must go at all costs. Onya Dota, with a strong support from the presidency, plotted to be part of the 10th NAS using the instrument of tribunal. She had worked tirelessly to ensure that the tribunal pronounced her the duly elected member by turning the rules of the election on the head. With her limitless access to funds, it wasn't difficult for her to get Amo Bioga sacked by the tribunal. Not because he lost the election, but the trial judge canceled all the votes of the Labour Party on the ground of his membership of the party. Of course, the electoral law has been interpreted by even the Supreme Court to suggest that only a political party has the powers to determine its membership. Nigerians are still wondering what motivated such judgment, but the answer is not far-fetched. She simply deployed her huge financial war chest and bought the judgment all the way. Not satisfied with the slow pace of tribunal routes to the National Assembly, Onya Jocha went for the killer punch by using a federal high court in Kanu to attempt to sack all elected political office holders from Abia State, the governor inclusive. The Kanu judgment rattled and quit the entire political space. Onye Jocha, who connived with some expelled members of the Labour Party, led by Lamy Diapapa, had applied to be a joiner in the case, but was refused by the judge for filing out of time. However, most of her pleadings before the court was granted, even when the court like the locals. He took the utilization from the general public before the matter was obtained by the appellate court. Not done, Onya Jocha, after the ruling of the tribunal, was appealed against, and the venue of the city moved to Lagos. Also initiated a crisis by using her Asoro connection to bully officials of INEC into committing a mortal mistake of pitching two senior advocates and legal luminaries. 
J.O. Asoluka San and Unisa Ustaz Usman San against each other in an open court on who holds the authority to represent INEC. Specifically, on the 11th of October 2023, the INEC Secretary Rose Orian Anthony, in a letter titled Letter of Instruction, conveyed the appointment of John Asolu Kassan by INEC to file an appeal at the Court of Appeal Owere Division on behalf of the Commission against the decision of the Abia State National and State House of Assembly Election Petition Tribunal in the number EPT ABHR slash 8, 2023, Honorable Kiruka, Chidubem, Onye Georgia, and Anno versus INEC and others. But in a twist of event, INEC went further to engage the services of Unisau Stars, Osman, on the same matter before the appeal court. We sincerely believe that INEC was everything but independent as the Commission acted helplessly and as a body being dictated to by unseen forces. However, Eunice Ustaz Usman San, on the 17th of October, in a letter to the Commission, wrote to withdraw his representation in the two appeals before the Court of Appeal on the ground that the Commission had already briefed another law firm to represent or defend it. However, on the following day, at the commencement of the matter before the appeal court, a lawyer from the firm of Unisa Ustaz Usman, unknown to the senior counsel, surfaced even when the Asoluka and his team were already seated to represent the INEC. The, the, the inspiration by the lawyers from the firm of Unis Ustaz Usman, San, to insist on representing INEC even when the firm had already written to INEC, withdrawing its services, stoked our curiousness. Even as the embarrassed Ustaz Osman completely distanced himself from actions not known to him. On further investigation, we realized that INEC failed to release this letter written on the 17th by the fame of Yunus Ustaz Osman San, withdrawing from the case. The letter only surfaced after the unfortunate incident at appeal court. So we are wondering if there was any threat from high places against officials of INEC preventing them from making the letters public. We also took special note of the presence of our papa led splinter group who attempted to hijack the representation of the party at the court. Remember, that was not the first time they tried to do something like that. How did this splinter group come into the scenario? Who got them involved and for what purpose? The same group engaged by Onya Georgia to shop for judgment in a Kanu court. It is a known fact that these groups have evolved as meddlesome interlopers and have severally worked against the larger interests of the Labour Party, even when the Supreme Court has refused them recognition. Labour Party has. Labour Party and its candidates are in the appeal court to ask it to reject the judgment by the other states, National and State House of Assembly Election Petition Tribunal, and which cancel the victory of the party and its candidate, Amo Bioga, relying on the results generated and tendered by the petitioner, the APC candidate, as against the results generated by the INEC. How can that be possible? The onus falls on INEC to defend the resulted in generated, it, the result it generated from the election. And as Oluka San has the brief to defend INEC's result. Who then influenced the decision to remove him? Labour Party is also aware of the prosy war engaged by Onya Georgia for her principles who benefit bountifully from the artificial crisis in the Labour Party. Labour Party bruised the ego of the ruling party, whether anybody likes it or not, in the last general election. And it was believed in their cycle that a divided Labour Party will be weak to stage a claim to their mandate. Onyed Ocha was allegedly chosen by the APC leader in the Southeast and the Imo State Governor, 
Hope was Odemma as a conduit to fund the dissidents. The party is also not unaware of her roles in denying Labour Party her victory in Enugu State through her kinsmen who served as electoral officer and the returning officer in Enugu State. We are worried that millions of Naira was allegedly budgeted by Onyajocha to sustain the crisis in the Labour Party by funding her papa and his cohorts, and particularly to ensure that Amo Bioga is removed from the House of Representatives. This money, which ought to be channeled to helping in alleviating scorching poverty in her constituency, is being thrown around all in her inordinate quest for power. The little of that money would have been used to build road in Isukwata Umunochi. There is no road there. The question that has not been answered is why the obsession for power? It is practically impossible for Yajuacha to be speaker again, at least under this 10th assembly, as offices have since been distributed and his a serving Minister of State. What does she hope to gain in ensuring and sustaining crisis in the Labour Party by massively funding her papa and his gang? In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, we are therefore calling on the present government to relieve Oya Jocha of her ministerial role as she has lost focus and since she has refused to concentrate on the assignment given to her as Minister of Labour for State, of course, you know that the labor unions are crying, salaries are not being paid, and the palliative promise then is not worth it. So he has to be relieved of his duty. We also urge security agencies, including police, DSS, EFCC, and ICPC, to please invite Oya Jota for questioning over her role in funding insurrection in the Labour Party. Bullying of INEC staffs, manipulating the judiciary, and also helping to stop political crisis in Nigeria's best political party, the Labour Party of Nigeria. Thank you, and God bless you. There should be no doubt about what has happened. I neck briefed Jehu Asoluka to defend the victory of Amobi Oga, because I neck declared Amobi Oga as winner of that election. And now, at the tribunal, Something on tour has happened, and we believe that where well, that has happened, but we are confident that the victory belongs to us. I'm a guy is confident, and I neck is confident that Tommy Boga won that election. And so, at the court of appeal, I neck briefed Joe Asoluka, but we don't know what mess up happened, what went behind, and there was a, a letter of instruction to another counsel. And that counsel was honorable enough to say that my colleague is already in this matter a co-senior advocate of Nigeria. So I'm would well, how can I be briefed and to represent INEC in this matter? So the, the roach to INEC that he is withdrawing from that case because a colleague is already handling it. So that's the situation. Joe Asoluka is INEC's lawyer and we expect him to represent INEC in that matter tomorrow. All the letters are with me. <laughs>